Welcome to BiblioCreep Books and Journaling. Today we'll be doing the July reading wrap-up with five book reviews and an update of my July reading journal spreads. Hello creepy friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, as usual, in the voiceover you'll be hearing the book reviews for all the books I read in July, and in the visual you'll be seeing me updating my July reading journal spreads. I'll do the book reviews roughly in order from my least favorite to my most favorite. All the books that I mention and all the materials that I'm using in my journal will be linked in the description box. And if you'd like to see how I set up these July reading journal spreads and drew all the illustrations, a link to that video will be in the card and also in the description box. Alright, let's get started in on our reviews. A Wild Sheep Chase by Haruki Murakami Read this if you're looking for weird literary fiction translated from Japanese, possession by an evil entity possibly representing ambition or toxic masculinity, a conflicted unnamed main character, magical realism and an offbeat sense of humor, and more sheep info than you've ever heard in your life. This is another of Murakami's early novels written in the 1980s, and it's the third book in the Rat series. The story follows the same unnamed narrator as in the other books in the series. He becomes wrapped up in a strange mystery and travels to Hokkaido to look for a sheep with special markings, a sheep like no other. As the mystery unfolds, the narrator finds that this sheep is perhaps something even more insidious than he expected. As I work my way through all of Murakami's catalog, I am finding myself not quite as enchanted by his earlier work, even though this one is a lot of people's favorite. Although there was some of his signature magical realism in this one, I found it to drag a little bit, and I didn't care very much about what happened to the characters. I did enjoy the setting and the atmosphere of Hokkaido that Murakami included, and the descriptions of the wintry landscape. As with most of Murakami's books, the representation of women is a little bit weird and objectifying. The main character has an unnamed girlfriend, and he can't stop talking about her alluring ears, which is strange. Again, while I enjoy his writing style and quirky sense of humor, I don't think this one was a win for me personally. Tokyo Ueno Station by Yu Miri Read this if you're looking for a man who haunts a train station as he reminisces about his past, a commentary on class inequality, emotional ineptness, and aging, a meditation on grief, a slice of life featuring the people moving through the station, and literary fiction translated from Japanese. This story tells the tale of one man's life, exploring his memories from his later years, and touching on his connections to others, especially his family. The writing style was beautiful, incorporating some stream-of-consciousness sections and snippets of overheard conversations that sort of reminded me of Virginia Woolf's writing style. Many of the characters are unhoused, living in plywood huts around Tokyo Ueno train station, and this is the first time that I've seen that representation in a book from Japan. This book empathetically shows a look at old age and how many older people are forgotten, as well as how income inequality disproportionately affects older people. It also explores the joys and pains of parenthood and how parents can sometimes fail their children even when they are doing their best. This was an emotional and gorgeously written book, and I recommend it for those who like to get in their feels. A quote from Tokyo Ueno Station. To speak is to stumble, to hesitate, to detour and hit dead ends. To listen is straightforward. You can always just listen. Scattered All Over the Earth by Yoko Tawada. Read this if you're looking for quirky literary sci-fi translated from Japanese. A story about the power of language multiple POVs from diverse and likable characters, all kinds of LGBTQIA plus representation, found family, and mommy issues. This is the first book I've read from Tawada, and I'm intrigued to read more. 
This is a story of found family set in the near future. Japan no longer exists due to flooding from climate change and the Japanese people are scattered all over the earth. It seems that Japan itself has almost been forgotten by the rest of the world and is often referred to as the land of sushi in conversation. Though this is told in multiple POVs, there does seem to be a main character, Hiruko, a Japanese woman living in Scandinavia who is on a journey to find at least one other speaker of her native language. In the process, she meets several other people with whom she bonds and they form a found family. The highlight of this book are the characters. Tawada weaves the multiple POVs together expertly and they were all engaging with the characters feeling like real people. Normally, multiple POVs can sometimes be hit or miss, with some of them not being as interesting as the others. But all the characters in this book were fleshed out in such a way that I felt that I knew them right away and it didn't take long to get into the flow of each chapter. The book also has great representation of all kinds, with main characters of different races, nationalities, gender identities, and sexual orientations. This is part one of a trilogy, which have all been released in Japanese, but the English translations of the second and third books haven't come out yet, so I'm excited to see where the rest of this heartwarming story goes. Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle. This is an ARC review, and the publishing date for this book was the 9th of July, 2024. I received this ebook for free from a publisher in exchange for an honest review. Read this if you're looking for cheeky and satirical horror, a critique of queer representation in Hollywood and corporations condescending to queer consumers, a story where the real horror is capitalism and suppressing your true self, creepy creatures of mysterious origin, and a book written by a queer and autistic author. This book follows Misha, a closeted Hollywood TV and film writer who has been in the industry many years, when he is suddenly told to kill off two of his gay main characters in one of his popular shows by the upper management. Misha refuses, stating that he will not perpetuate the bury your gaze trope that has been common in Hollywood. After this refusal, strange events begin happening to Misha and his friends, and to other queer writers in the studio with monstrous and dangerous characters from Misha's previous shows somehow showing up in real life. Misha must figure out what's going on in order to save himself and those he loves. And to do that, he must face his traumatic past and embrace who he really is. This is Chuck Tingle's second full-length novel, and it was a campy romp of a horror novel. Chuck Tingle also wrote Camp Damascus, which was one of my best books of last year, and he's quickly becoming one of my favorite horror writers of all time. The horror in this book is fueled by capitalistic greed, which I think is pretty relevant at the moment. The book also pokes fun at the performative and often empty actions of corporations to appeal to the LGBTQIA community with shallow representation and rainbow merch. It was also gory and full of action, and there was never a dull moment. I also really appreciated the diverse representation with an asexual and aromantic major character, which is sorely lacking in a lot of LGBTQIA stories. I strongly recommend this for anyone who enjoys humorous or satirical horror. Paradise Rot by Jenny Vall a quote. Next morning, it was raining, and I woke up to the drumbeat of raindrops on the roof, the pattering noise never quite keeping a rhythm. Through the drumming, something else could be heard. Apple skin against wood, rolling through the kitchen, back and forth, like eggs ready to hatch. Read this if you're looking for weird literary fiction translated from Norwegian, ethereal girl love, allusions to the original sin of being a woman, beautiful descriptions of decay and natural processes, writing that gives you that uncanny and underwater feeling, and lots of pee talk. This is a surreal novel written by the Norwegian singer and songwriter Jenny Val. 
it turned out to be another I don't know what I read but I loved it situation, which seems to be what I've been loving lately. This book is difficult to describe or categorize. In this short novel, a young Norwegian woman, Jo, moves to England for school and sets out to find an apartment to rent. She moves into a strange converted brewery with an intriguing woman, Carol, and nature begins to take over the building and their bodies. The two women get closer and begin an obsessive and consuming relationship. I found the imagery in this book so beautiful, conveying the cycle of birth and rebirth. As the title implies, there is much descriptive imagery of rot and decay, and fungus and plant life growing out of it. The paradise in the title refers to the biblical paradise. There were strong allusions to the Garden of Eden, Eve with the serpent, and the danger and monstrosity of being a woman. I highly recommend this for lovers of weird literary fiction, gorgeous imagery, and uncanny vibes. A quote from Paradise Rot. I snuggled up next to her. I could feel how she felt. From her ears, I could hear a soft rushing sound, as if from a conch shell. If I closed my eyes, I could hear the house creak, and it swayed as though we were at sea. And later in the afternoon, it was as if we were in the sea and carried the house inside us. In my dreams, I could feel metal push against my throat, and I imagined that I had swallowed the railing, the taps, the window handles, every piece of furniture in the house. Together we filled each other to the brim and lay there slumped in an all-consuming doze like gorged snakes digesting their prey. And that wraps up my July reading. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe and leave me an apple emoji in the comments if you've made it this far. I hope you'll join me again in the near future. Next Thursday, I will be putting out the new setup video for my September reading journal. And the following Thursday after that, I'll be putting out the setup video for my September bullet journal. And if you'd like more journaling and book review content, you can join me on my website, bibliocreep.com, or on Instagram and all my other social media sites. My handle is at biblio underscore creep. I hope you've been having a great day. Please take care of yourself, drink your water, find some time to do the things that you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.